Hmm. 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 You gotta be kidding me. Hi guys, Sean here, currently quarantined in the basement. So during my quarantine, I've been reading a lot about the coronavirus, and specifically I've been looking at some of the statistics behind it. One statistic that has stood out to me in particular is the fatality rate. So I wanted to go behind the scenes and try to figure out how the media was computing the fatality rate. And I noticed the mistake that the media was making over and over and over again, and it's actually quite a simple mistake. So I went on Instagram and posted on my story about this mistake, and I realized that even many people who are much, much smarter than me did not realize this mistake. So I decided to make a video that could very simply explain why the fatality rate that the media is computing has a massive flaw to it. It's very simple to understand, and I hope you enjoy. So first we must understand how media sources are computing death rate. So we'll abbreviate media death rate as MDR. MDR. And it's computed as follows. So it's the total number of deaths divided by the total number of confirmed cases. So yeah, simple enough. Um, a basically numerator of a denominator part of a whole. Um, so basically we can look at, at what the statistic is today and see what the death rate the media would be computing for today. So today is March 21st. So MDR, and we'll just specify that this is on March 21st. So I'm looking at world of meters right now, and I believe that there today there have been a total of 12,954 deaths with a total number of confirmed cases of 301,513. So to clarify, <clears throat> what I mean by total deaths, it's the total number of deaths up until today. So basically dating back from December 2019 until today, a total of 12,954 people have died. And with confirmed cases, there have been a total of 301,513 dating back from December of 2019. So this number comes out to be about 4.29%. And so this is relatively consistent with what we're seeing in the media where people saying, are saying the death rate of COVID-19 is around 4%. That's what they're reporting. So we believe there might be an issue with this. And I believe the best way to show this is by giving a, a very simple example. So let's say we have four people. We'll say... We'll call this example. And we'll say we have four people. And we'll call them A, B, C, D. And all of these people are infected by the, by the coronavirus, but they have different results. So we'll, we'll put result here. Um, actually, let's make this into a chart. Um, probably better to make this into a chart. So we'll say result. And the day they were infected, day infected, And we'll also note the number of days until the result. Two results. So this is uh, so this so the second uh, sorry the third column here is the day that the person was infected. And the last column is the number of days it took from the person being infected to reaching their final result, which we'll say is either recovery or 
them dying. So let's say person A dies. So we'll just mark that as D, or let's just say die because we have a person D right here. Um, person B recovers. Person C recovers. And person D dies. So let's say that person A is infected on January 1st. Person B is infected on January 3rd. Person C is infected on January 5th. And then person D is infected on January 7th. Let me zoom out a bit here. And the number of days from infected to result, we'll say for the people who die, let's say it's 18. And for the people who recover, let's say it's 22. Um, so this makes sense. So these statistics are actually um, compiled from people who have been studying and treating the disease in China. So these are actually fairly realistic numbers. And also with the days infected, these are also fairly realistic numbers and within the time frame of, uh, of COVID-19. So we're going to assume that hindsight is 2020 here, right? And we'll assume that like a year from now, we will know the results of all these people because, you know, a year is 300, you know, 365 days and, and none of these numbers even approach even nearly, even close to 365, 18, 22, 22, not even close, right? So we'll call the death rate, we'll call this death rate, um, we'll call it a hindsight death rate. So we'll call it HDR. So our hindsight death rate of COVID-19 in this case would be the total number of deaths divided by the number of cases. So in this case, the two people we know that died from this disease are person A and person D. So basically, that, that number would be two. The number of cases in total is four. So two out of four, that gives us 50%. So in this case, there's a 50% mortality rate. However, let's look at the perspective of maybe let's choose a specific day, right? Let's say the day we choose is January 20th, right? So maybe we can add another column here and we'll call we'll 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 call it the result date. So the result date of person A, so we know that person A dies on January 19th. Person B recovers on January 22nd. Person C recovers on January 27th. Again, we're just doing, we're just adding 22 days to January 3rd, 22 days to January 5th, 18 days to January 1st, etc. So it makes sense, right? So, so, and then person D, the result date would be January 25th. Apologies, this writing was not very good. So we're looking at the perspective of January 20th. So on January 20th, we'll call this the current death rate, which is still equal to the number of deaths that we know of on that day divided by the number of cases. So by this point, we only know that person A has died, right? So person A, that's an X. Person B is still alive and eventually does recover. Person C is alive and eventually does recover. But person D, as of January 20th, is still alive, but later dies. So we will still have to put a check mark right there. And, you know, all these cases we know are, are have occurred because, you know, January 20th is far, far after the dates infected that we looked at. Or the days that these people were infected. So the number of deaths would just strictly be one over four. We only know person A died, but we know of the existence of all four cases already since January 20th is in the future of January 7th, which is the latest date. So that gives us 25%. So as you can see, this is an issue. 
25% clearly does not equal 50%. And as a matter of fact, this discrepancy is actually extremely large. And so we have to analyze why this is the situation. Why, what person is causing this discrepancy to exist? And if you're observant, and like you might have noticed that the person that is causing this discrepancy is person D right here. So person D is counted in the hindsight death rate because we know in hindsight that this person dies, but on January 20th, we do not know this person dies. So we have to take a look at person D and understand why this is the case. So I think the best way we can first approach this is kind of by making a little diagram. So when we're talking about, let's say, confirmed cases, we can divide them into active and closed. So we'll go over this terminology on what this means. Um, so for active cases, these are cases that we do not have a result yet. So basically, we're not sure if the person will recover or if the person will die. With closed cases, we are sure. We know that the person has recovered or if the person has died. And with an ongoing pandemic, as of March 21st, the number of active cases are non-zero. So now let's look at deaths. Again, we're basically just breaking down the numerator and the denominator here and trying to better understand what is going on here. So with deaths, we know that deaths are closed because once someone dies, they cannot recover. There's no uncertainty about what, they will, what will happen to them. So we will say the person dies or died. I don't know, whatever. Um, so now let's try to categorize each person into the respective category of confirmed cases and deaths. So we know that person A, as uh, when we're looking from the perspective of January 20th, we know that person A is a closed case and they have died. There's no question about that. Person B and C, they're still active cases because we know that they eventually recover, but on January 20th, we do not know that because their result date is not until January 22nd and January 20, 22nd and January 27th. So we will put this here, B and C. And then with person D, we know that person D eventually dies, but we don't know that as of January 20th, 20, uh, I guess January 20th, 2020, right? So now, again, we're interested in person D, trying to figure out what is happening, right? So specifically, we notice that person D follows the path of active and dying. So those must be the people that we're not counting in, in this computation. And that does make sense, right? Because if we look at deaths in this case, we only count person A and we don't count person D um, because person D is an active case and we don't know what happens to person D yet. So in this situation, all people who are active cases and end up Dying is not included, or sorry, are, sorry, bad grammar, are not included in the mortality rate that's computed by the media, which is extremely unrealistic. The media is basically assuming that all active cases will recover when computing this mortality rate. And we know that this is just for certain not true. So we believe that the number of deaths, or this leads us to believe that the number of deaths 
and it should be much higher. Or this error leads us to believe that the number of deaths should be higher, which would increase our mortality rate. From what the media is reporting. So you might be asking, Sean, so does that mean the 4% death rate that we hear of is too low? Well, not exactly. Because there's another issue when the media is, uh, is using these statistics. So the other issue I have read about commonly is that cases are underreported. Basically, that leads us to believe that the number of cases should be higher. So if we go back to our death rate here, the number of deaths divided by the number of cases, if the number of cases increases, then our death rate decreases. So let's say increase number of cases leads to decrease in mortality rate. Because the idea is that it's, it's unlikely that people are under-reporting the number of deaths. They're, they're most likely just under-reporting the number of cases. Because if someone dies, then generally we believe that people will know that, that someone dies. Because there's a lot, of, a lot of hurdles that they have to jump through, or there's a lot of attention if someone dies. But if someone only shows like you know mild symptoms, then they might not even know they have coronavirus or they might not even go to the hospital. They just think it's better to stay at home. And maybe this is a good thing because some medical systems are strained right now. But the issue is that this leads to under-reporting the number of cases. So we see that there are actually two, two, -ish, uh, two forces fighting against each other. One error is pushing the mortality rate up and the other error is pushing the mortality rate down. And so that's why the, the answer, the final answer, which is unfortunate, is that I don't know if the media is, if the media's mortality rate is too high or too low. And frankly, I don't know if many people in this world do know because there's so much uncertainty and these are issues that are very difficult to overcome. Hey guys, thanks for watching the explanation. I hope it was enlightening and it made sense. The point of this video was to show how the statistics that the media presents does not paint the picture that many people think it does. Overall, I know there are people that will be talking about the semantics, especially like the terminology that I use, mortality rate, death rate, fatality rate, not being exactly the same thing. But I think to the general population, they do mean the same thing. And so I want to enlighten people on how to be careful and how to you know, nitpick and check how these numbers came to be. I'm sorry that unfortunately I cannot provide a better method to compute the mortality rate. This is something that's ongoing work for many scientists and statisticians, and I'm also continuously thinking about how to develop a better method. And if I am able to develop a method, along with having people who are interested, I will possibly make a video in the future explaining, explaining that and explaining what I've found. Again, thank you for watching the video. Please smash that like, comment, share, and subscribe, especially if you want to see how coronavirus has affected my life. See you guys later. Peace.